Hello, I'm Owen O'Reilly of PAT, Professional Accountancy Training, and I teach the SBL course there. Now, last night in class, one of the students said, Owen, could you identify areas on the examiner's reports which have been identified as areas that have been done poorly? So I thought that's a good idea. Let's do a, a short video on that, and I think it'll be useful for you. OK, so let's do it. So here we go. Um, and I always refer to SBL champions. That's who you are. Thank you so much for all of your efforts and good luck in the exam next Tuesday. Today is the Tuesday before that. And I appreciate you're doing an awful lot of work at the moment. Honestly, keep going. You can do this. OK, let's have a look at it, though, here, if we could. We're trying to uh, identify key ideas or points from the examiner's reports from March 2020 to June 22, yeah, the last exam, to identify areas noted as done poorly, okay, because they might come up again, yeah, um, but it's actually uh, an analysis in this, the feedback it gives us a lot of good advice anyway, right, on exam technique and other points, so let's do it, okay. So as you're doing it, uh, why don't you think here around how can I use this information? That's what I want you to be thinking of, right, in the exam, right? So mentally right now, can you just push yourself forward to Tuesday morning? Maybe you're starting at, say, nine o'clock. You're in the exam and you now want to mentally get that feeling of being in the exam. So how can I use this information is what you're trying to uh, get into your mind. OK, uh, if you were doing the taught course and the revision course with me, you'd know we think about these things a lot because that's the way that you can make it, that you do those things in the exam. OK, we'll think about it. Keep going here, Owen. So the first one here is from March 2020, TT for you, right? So you probably would have seen this uh, in your review of past exams, but let's have a look at it here if we could. And I'm going to skip some of it because you can go down through. I'm going to put this um, onto the uh, the website and to the Moodle. So you can download this and you can have a look at it and uh, see these points here. Prepare a section of your report which critically evaluates the investment appraisal. Let's have a look at it here if we could. Uh, so prepare a section of your report which critically evaluates the investment appraisal of the finance uh, director's uh, assistant. OK, so... There's a, um, a section here and it's scepticism is the professional skill. OK, so again, poorly done is the uh, point that they're trying to point out. The task required a systematic approach, reviewing the net present value calculation line by line. OK, so there's uh, a good piece of advice. You're just if you are asked, if you've given a net present value, you're asked to review it. Just go down through it line by line. Right. Are there any elements that are, were missing? OK or bogus. That's what I want you to uh, also focus on. Do you remember we looked in the course at Tillo where they put in staff morale and improved uh, information and they'd given a financial value for those. OK, so they're bogus. You can't give a financial value to an observable benefit. OK, now we looked at that before, but you get the idea. Here's two others I want you to particularly look at. There is the uh, payback calculation and notes about sensitivity of the analysis right now do you remember we did those before here's one that i want you to uh, particularly look at if you uh, would uh, look at it so from the uh, uh, the summary notes that you have you've got this idea that it's the uh, the net present value is uh, divided by the initial investment so do you remember for nebby hotel specimen exam three We'd looked at it here. The net present value was 650k divided by the initial investment for the restaurant of 5 million meant that there was a 13% leeway there. This means, do you remember, we're always trying to get that phrase in as much as possible in our answers that the uh, the cost of the investment could rise by 13% before the net present value becomes negative, right? So if you would just make a note of that, that idea of the sensitivity of the um, um, of the investment. Make sure that you're talking about that if possible, right? Um, so he goes on here, uh, they go on here to say candidates who did this and explained clearly uh, why, so again, you know, this idea of uh, why they were querying the, the figures uh, and assumptions scored well, right? 
uh, the most significant weakness was failing to provide an explanation for why you know they were querying something so what's the point of your query yeah so don't just query explain this is important because right or this is relevant or whatever is the phrase you want to use right keep going here Owen. these guys get it so uh, they needed to make comments so you need to make comments right on uh, the specific aspects of the appraisal so you need to add value you need to be saying something useful for the client and so the phrases that we often use here are this means or this implies or this indicates and i said to you on day one of the taught course that you'd need to be getting maybe about uh, uh, 50 or 60 times down this means yeah do you remember we were looking at uh, some of the work of the student who in june 22 came first in ireland third in the world scored 89 percent do you remember we looked at some of those um mocks and they were always saying this means and it was a great way for you to see that actually the exam technique that we teach here at PAT is uh, very, very useful for you scoring very high marks in SPL. OK, that's enough, right? You can go down through the rest of it here, but, you know, you can see here that they went on to say that uh, candidates appear to demonstrate a lack of understanding of financial management. So, again, you'd want to make sure we always say here at uh, PAT for SPL that uh, try and use the financial analysis too much. And if you use it too much, you're in danger of passing. OK, all right. You've heard that one before. Fair enough. Keep going. Uh, task two. So again, there was issues here around uh, e-marketing. Right. OK. Um, and the issue here is how it can be used to attract and retain clients. So what are the key words here? We're always saying, you know, what are the key words so you definitely want to know about to uh, talk about how but it's uh, attract and retain are the key words and you're going to use those to structure an answer and we look at that now in a second yeah and you know the, the you can go down through some of the other points here yourself right um but uh, candidates discuss uh, you know issues around the cloud rather than how that's the, the word that you want to be getting to uh, these would be marketed okay um, so e-marketing was again done poorly in June 19. This is taken from the examiner's report. So, you know, suggesting that this is an area where candidates need to be better prepared. So you want to say to yourself, OK, I got it around e-marketing. Now, there has been a couple of uh, questions around it recently, but that's OK. You get the idea. You want to just note this. So what are the key words? We always say to ourselves, identify them. So how e-marketing can attract new clients for TT for you and how is uh, e-marketing can retain. So again, there's a structure. Develop your points underneath, right? Not bullet points. Bullet points won't score. You need to make sure that all of your points are around two, two and a half lines long. And if you do that, not more than that, by the way, right? So short, punchy paragraphs is your route to success, okay? Now, always get the key. <laughs> so note that if you would always get the key words first right and then set up your structure like we just have here above right okay and then get all of your points sorted so you want to identify all of your scoring points and then and only then do you want to go back in and fill them in so like a jigsaw you get the outside bits and then you fill it in okay so think about that. Really reflect on your exam technique. OK. All right. You with me? Great. Keep going. So here's another one here. Task 3C. Right. I'm going to let you go down through this uh, uh, yourself. OK. Um, but there was uh, issues here around poorly answered, lack of content, failure to answer, maybe issues around time management. Now, time management for SPL is always important. OK. So I'd like you to think of it as a military operation. You really want to spend some uh, time preparing mentally for just keeping on it. Now, how many minutes per mark? I know the ACCA say two and a half minutes per mark, but I think anyone who does the uh, figures on that will realise that's uh, that would mean you finish, if you start at nine o'clock, finish exactly at one o'clock. And I don't think that's a good approach. So we always say here at PAT, for SBL, it's two minutes a mark. OK, and we can talk about that more uh, if you if you want to uh, in the revision course. 
but I think we've uh, really talked about that enough at this stage, Owen, but it's two minutes a mark, right? Um, and that gives you a little bit extra leeway to give a little bit of extra attention where you need it. And that means you're going to be finishing up around 12.50 and it gives you a further 10 minutes to be able to, you know, go back in and tweak things appropriately and get up into the high 80s like several of our students have recently. Um, so here, again, it's an important point and you want to look at it down below here. Um, um, external experience and additional blah, 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 important areas for TT for you. OK, so in other words, the point is that whatever you're saying, you need to try and make sure that it's relevant to the context of the case company, right? That your advice is not seen as therefore not generic, right? So examiner's reports are often saying that students fail because they come up with sort of uh, what will be seen as general sort of management account uh, management consultancy advice but they don't tweak it to this particular client right so in other words particularly important for tt for you because will you write that down okay okay cool let's keep going you're getting it here's the june exam which actually wasn't published but they gave an examiner's report for it and you can see here that um just a, just a line at the end of it that I thought would be useful for you to hear as you prepare for your exam next Tuesday. It says, unfortunately, dun, 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 unfortunately, it sounds almost as bad as however. Anyway, unfortunately, a significant proportion of candidates did not attempt all the questions, which is because they spent too much time planning their answers and describing models and frameworks and concepts, leaving less time for them to apply to the task at hand. Look, it's all about application. Isn't that true? Uh, apply, apply, apply. So you need to be making sure that you're applying it, but to that particular company's situation. Okay, do you get that? Yeah. So I, I you know, we're always saying to you, uh, use these words, you know, this means, this implies, Here's a good one, particularly important in, say, Nebi Hotel, uh, in the hotel industry, because, OK, do you get that? OK, so use that phrase in your exam. Here's another uh, paper, BCO from September, December 2020, right? So it says, analyze the financial and non-financial performance of BCO in the latest financial year, providing reasons for and implications of the results. Now, always ask yourself, what are the key words? Do you have it? Have a look at it, right? Then out of those keywords, you know, set up a structure. What would be a structure, right? Let's think about it, okay? Now, as it turns out, the examiners went on to say that, you know, there was uh, disappointing answers. In exhibit four, candidates had a, you know, um, summary of the financial data. Let's look at that. If I go in here to the, uh, the test uh, reach um, system that we use here at... Uh, uh, PAT, right? You'll see here there is the financial figures, okay? And you know, even if I look at that there, I can uh, take it. Let's just do this uh, so we can have a look at it here. I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to escape out of that there if I can. Es escaped out of it. Now, if I come in here and if I copy it, let's just copy it and see how this works here. Okay, so there it is. And I'll copy it and I'm going to bring it up into the uh, spreadsheet, right? And I'll just bring it in there so I can uh, work on it. Now, as it turns out, as luck would have it, it's an example of one where I have to change around the size of the columns. But listen, no bother to you guys. And then as it turns out here, I can uh, have a look at the, uh, so that equals. Now, again, I have to note which way the figures are going. So they're going from... Uh, column C is 20x, so say 2020, and column B is 2021, so I have to be careful. So it equals um, um, B5, so it's B5 minus uh, C5, okay? So it's 98, so it actually has increased. Wild park, wild park, wildlife Park admissions have been increased by, so I'm going to uh, copy that. And then I'm just going to uh, go down through uh, all of uh, these here. So uh, you get the idea. And um, I'm going to go control V. And so now I've got some evidence here that might be useful. 
in the in the exam right and straight away as i look at it so again you got to be careful you're doing it the right way so you, you get it right and uh, you can see here that uh, say for example oh i can see donations and grants um and um for ones that don't come on, uh, out right say the one here with value at uh, d12 the sale of a property look, don't worry about it right but i am going to have this here am i going to get marks for this own no but you only get marks for when you make a comment on it right well let's go back into the uh, look at it here if we would so it says here that uh, say for example many candidates present a wide range of correct percentage change calculations right um but uh, they didn't go into any analysis of them so they did poorly right chances are you'll score zero marks if you give a ratio or a financial calculation you must say this means or this implies or this indicates okay um but you know that right and then a weaker count has merely stated the numbers had increased or decreased right answers were observational rather than analytical okay that's good right you want to say look i get it owen you're going into an exam next tuesday you're saying look i'm going to use this advice i'm going to making sure that i you know analyze which means you break something down into its smaller parts okay so let's have a look at it here if we could um, in the future, you need to use, well, this is useful guidance here. The examiners are saying that in the future, you uh, must also, must, let's put must because in green, because must also, um, whether the uh, calculation is positive, negative, significant, concerning. Do you see those words? Yeah. I want you to take a note of those. Put them down in your little piece of paper where you're taking notes. And then also to say, you know, why these have happened and maybe the potential consequences of them, right? So I'm suggesting to you that you use these words. Remember we said at the start, how can I use the information that I'm getting in this uh, little video? So again, I would say I would use these words, yeah? So significant because, concerning because, this has happened because, potential consequences are, right? These phrases are a great ways of adding value and saying something useful. Remember, you're being uh, let out at, uh, say, $300 a day or whatever it is. And in other words, the client is paying a lot of money for you. So you need to be saying something useful for them. Yeah. OK, now, before we go on, you can pause the video, try and set up a structure for this task. Right. So uh, pause the video, set up. How would you do it? What would be the structure? Go back up here and say to yourself, look, there is a task 1B, right? Give yourself a moment and say, OK, I'm going to make a, a uh, structure for this. Have you done it? OK, let's have a look at it. Now, in the uh, in the class, when we were doing this, we set up a table. If you actually look at it, you can say to yourself, OK, there is what do we have here? Let me take this uh, bit out here. It doesn't really uh, help me that much. And I'll go back in here and I'll say, OK, so what do we have? It says analyze the financial and non-financial performance. OK, OK. So let's say to ourselves, we could just put those straight in. Right. So that's cool. Look, you got them there. No bother to you. You got the financial. And guess what? Down here somewhere we've got the non-financial. OK, so we've got a way of just simply putting that in real fast. Right. OK. And then you hopefully in your structure, you also have put in, say, a section hitch, which says something like, say, for example, um, uh, providing reasons and implications of the results. OK, so again, you guys say, look, that's no problem, Owen. I've got reasons for and implications. Now, let's do one of these here. Right. So say, for example, you've got the uh, Wild Park um, uh, admissions. Do you see that one? Right. So give the evidence is my advice to you. Right. OK, so where did I get that? Well, if I was you, let's just say that I've got to say uh, here, let's say we, we, we do it here. I mean, you could let's just show you how you would do that. Um, so I've got it here from the. Um, um, my uh, spreadsheet. Right. And uh, and I would just copy it. Right. Take the whole thing just like that. And I would say so you have to take it line by line. You can't take all of it. It doesn't come out properly. Right. So as I bring it back in here, I would literally just go control V 
and then I would have to uh, uh, do something to it. So I will say that it is, uh, you know, uh, and I do it in caps, uh, up uh, 98K, uh, right? So in other words, quite quickly, I can put the evidence in, right? Okay, now I would actually go and take, you know, maybe uh, quite a few points and bring them in before I write up any of them. And the reason for that is because if you put in evidence and then write it up, you can start to get a little bit overlapping. You put in another point and when you could have really developed it into a separate point, okay? So go and get all of the different points that you might want to do. I got donations and grants here. Say, for example, make, say, let's see, here, there, there might be other ones. I put down etc. down here at the bottom. Let's see if there's uh, one here that we can get uh, on the fly for, say, for example, um, there might be uh, training days, say, for example. Um, um, so let's just uh, go over here, copy uh, training days per staff. Then we simply bring it in. This is uh, um, actually I have it down there already. doesn't matter, but I put in the evidence this time. So let's say we put it in. Right. And then it's uh, again, I'll just make sure I put down down. Excuse me. I like to put it all in caps just to uh, make it easy to see. So in other words, I put the evidence in and then I'm going to give something about uh, reasons and something about what that might uh, result in or consequences. OK, so let's have a look at the one that we looked at here for the, the first one, Wild Park, uh, Wildlife Park Admissions. OK, so I'll just take out the extra bit that I just put in there just to show you pasting. You guys know all this. Now, two reasons. Uh, the increase in admissions is particularly impressive are, now I'm just going to go back into this uh, this view here, right? So I'm just going to explain something positive here. So two reasons, uh, the increase in admission revenues is uh, impressive are in Exhibit 2, so I say Exhibit 2 here, just to show the examiner that I'm looking at the exhibits, um, the increase in price. So it mentions there's been an increase in the admissions price. Yeah. And yet still the revenues have gone up here. Right. OK. Now, they don't tell us how much they've uh, uh, increased the admission price. But OK, keep going. Right. Um, uh, which will generally dissuade people from attending. So I haven't just said there's been an increase in, in admission prices. You need to say what that what, why is that relevant or what what can I say? So I need to say something about that. And I think we'll all agree if the price goes up, generally that dissuades people from going and uh, to a place. OK. And uh, economic recession. So they also mentioned that there's an economic recession going on here. So lower dispose. And so again, I need to explain why that's relevant for us. Lower disposable income in a recession will usually hit discretionary spending, for example, going to BCO. OK. All right. OK. Now, evidence. Now, now, clearly, this is a mark. I've definitely scored a mark here. Right. OK. And, um, you know, I'm very happy with it. How about you guys? Yeah, it's at least one mark, in fact. Right. OK. Now, I need to say the implications of this result. Right. So, in other words, make sure you're giving this bit. Right. Very important. Now, remember the phrases that they asked us to use. Right. Do you remember these guys here before? Yeah. OK. That's not a great square, Owen. Jeepers, uh, let's take it out. So develop your point like this. Therefore, the 3.1% increase in admission. So I just made that into a percentage. I'm always a big fan of making whatever you're talking about a percentage, right? OK, um, so this 3.1 increase in admissions revenue is positive. So they told us to use that word positive. Let's use it, right? Is positive. And again, we always like using the super magic word because it implies, oh, this is all excellent stuff. The product is valued by customers and admissions have held up in a recession. Now, that's clearly a mark, right? You can see here, we're not writing too much. We're not writing too little. It's just about two lines, right? Don't overwrite anything. Get on to your next scoring point fast. So I've got two marks here. Do you agree? OK, cool. Let's keep going here. And you can see them. Here's another area. We got into donations, grants and legacies. Oh, and did you just cut and paste that from the uh, spreadsheet that you had? Yeah. Did you just put it here then that you just stressed? Oh, it's down. Um, uh, 134,000, right? Um, 
uh, one uh, 1,342,000, excuse me. And okay, now reasons include, well, so this point about the economic recession, I can actually just copy and paste that from the above, right? But this time I need to tweak it to the situation which is uh, this idea of uh, donations and grants. So economic recession, lower disposable income in the recession will usually hit discretionary spending, for example, donations and grants at BCO. Okay, well, that's clearly a mark, right? Okay, um, I might have uh, put in government grants, for example, at BCO. And again, maybe, you know, but generally, I think I've done enough to uh, imply that this and this here clearly is a mark, right? Okay. Now, this implies, again, lovely phrasing. We always love it every time we get this implies or this means or this indicates. Do you see why? Because whatever I say next is always a scoring mark. Well, let's see, right? This, uh, this implies a concerning. Oh, was that one of the words that they told us to use up here? Oh, there it is. Concerning. Let's uh, let's just highlight it. Right. This is concerning um, um, uh, a drop of 6.5% of total income. Right. OK. This means there is likely a significant hole in the budget. OK. So anytime you can refer to something like that. So again, this means a significant hole in the budget. OK. That will need to be addressed in this case by the sale of property worth 525K. Do you remember that? There was a, a, a situation, if we look at it here, um, whereby it says, oh, do you see there at uh, B12, sale of property? Remember, we had that value was coming up there. Not so nice uh, to see that value coming up there, but it's a 525K. And you're saying, do you know what? There's a problem right now. In this case, it's not a problem because I've scored another mark and it's move on smoothly. Do you see here? If you were to put that out over the whole, if you've had two lines, two lines is perfect in SPL, right? As the previous student who scored 89% last June 2022 was, uh, if you look at their work, it's about, everything's about two lines, two and a half lines, and there's a mark there, right? You've got to do that 80 times in your exam on Tuesday, right? Do you think you can do that? So time management shouldn't be a problem really, right? Take a little bit more time in the reading and planning at the start. I know the ACCA say take about 40 minutes. We'd suggest to you to take about 50 minutes, maybe 55 minutes. Be sure about where you're going and get a good foundation. OK, all right. Now, here's another point. Um, it should be noted that donations, grants and legacies. So again, I've just really cut and pasted that from uh, from uh, from from um, over here. If you think about it, I've just taken it and I've just put it back down here. Right. Uh, means a drop of 15 percent. So again, if I can calculate something, I tend to try and do it. Right. So this is down. This is very concerning. Right. Uh, for BCO as donations, grants and legacies account for 42 percent. So again, if you ever can say something in a percentage, then I, I suspect it quantifies the scale of the problem in a way that a marker finds attractive. Yeah. OK. Um, so again, if you uh, think about it, it's 42 percent of total income, these donations, grants, etc. Right. So in other words, uh, uh, in the previous year, Right. OK. Do you see that BCO need to understand the trend in this as a percentage change here have a very significant impact on the overall income as it accounts for a large percentage of income. OK, so my feeling here is this is a very well put together point. Lots of financial evidence. Right. OK, I've definitely scored another mark here if I could. Now, the thing about it here is. I could have put all of that in above. So I could have put it all in here, right? So again, I'm just going to show you where I'm talking about. I could have put it all in here, right? But I like to put it in a separate box here because I want to ensure that the marker gives me that second mark, right? Or in this case, third mark, right? Okay. It is a different area. It, it, it's, a, it's under donations, grants and legacies, but it's a separate point. I want to make sure that the marker who, you know, they've got loads of these to correct, that they make sure that they give me that extra mark, right? And they will, right? Okay. That's enough. You got it. 
let's keep going here Owen and so you can go down through non-financial performance yourself staff training whatever it is all the areas and again make sure you've got your points in there first before you go back and write up any of the points that we're looking at okay why because I want to make sure that I have my thoughts clear about what's a mark and what's in what's a uh, a section to write on rather than you know sometimes if you don't do that in advance you can start some of your points can start to overlap each other do you ever have that experience yeah so identify all of your points first okay and then when you've done that you can then you can even see oh well, actually this one's a more important one and because it's computer based exam you can actually put it up first and say the priority issue here is okay you got it now there's some other ones here that you can look at here task 3 from that exam also if i can just uh, bring it up here um where it says um 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 to write a report that evaluates the current risk register and so anything is uh, when you see an and that means there's another section coming up here the adequacy of uh, each of the risk mitigating activities clearly highlighting whether the uh, chairman's uh, concerns were justified right okay so again not well answered is your point here and there was a um, because many candidates did not read the question requirement carefully now that's a theme that we're going to highlight in pink because we want to see it right and it says here particularly the information directly above the question so it turns out there was more sort of relevant information just above the requirement the task right so i'm going to put that down watch out for this in your exam and i think you'll see that in this particular review that happens a few times right so it's kind of a theme whereby they're saying sometimes really important information is, in, is contained in just above where the task is okay okay so that's important right i'm gonna let you guys do this one yourself what are the key words identify what the key words are and then set up a structure right okay i think you can you guys can do that okay all right. Um, now, then it goes into NCCP from um, May, March, June uh, 2021. OK, and again, you can go down through some of this yourself. Right. OK. Um, so they said uh, assesses the uh, sources of competitive advantage. Disappointing. Many candidates provide a general description or listed strengths and weaknesses, you know, ignored the critical part giving a, a, a critical assessment choosing not to include critical views okay you get it stronger candidates oh let's look what those guys are up to um identified uh, the benefit uh, uh, nccp's courses provided uh, delivering a product that the participants need and offering real value due to the subsidies good going on to evaluate the issues in the case that would impact these competitive advantages in the future. So in other words, it's not generic. It's very much about NCCP's particular situation, right? Okay. Um, so you can see here, you know, key weaknesses of the students reproducing material from the case without explaining why it provides, whoops, that's not good on, why it provides uh, a source of competitive advantage, failing to identify the factors that would lead to competitive advantage being compromised in the future. Okay, all right, you got it, right? Um, 2A, there's a, another section there on risk management, right? Not well answered. Okay, you get the idea. And you're saying to yourself, I got it, Owen. Much of this was because the candidates did not read the question requirement carefully. Oh, it's uh, that looks it looks out like this is a bit of a theme, right? OK, particularly the information above the question. OK, so they're doing that thing again. And you're saying, OK, I got it, Owen. How can I use this information in my exam next Tuesday? I'm going to make sure that I'm looking at the information above to see is it of relevance to how I should be answering this task, right? So we're just going to say, yeah, I got it, Owen. We're going to look for that. OK, that's enough. Um, that's enough. You can go down through these points, say, uh, yourself, right? Um, so here, stronger candidates evaluate the overall approach uh, and identified weaknesses to get this one here again, relevant to NCCP rather than generic observations. Yeah, OK and included positive evaluations for example the creating the risk register was a positive step to uh, in uh, in risk management 
Okay, um, that's enough. Um, you get uh, this idea here. Uh, one other one to note here is this idea of failing to demonstrate an understanding of the charitable focus or status of NCCP and the size of NCP. So, for example, recommending a risk committee. Now, if I was you, I would be particularly looking out for, in your exam, the possibility of a family run business like Nebi, right? And for you to be saying to yourself, OK, um, you know, so in other words, in corporate governance, what sort of things would be relevant in a smaller family run business? OK, as opposed to a, a FTSE 350 company, right? Um, Repeating information for the exhibit without adding any value, right? So again, you're always trying to say this implies this means give value to the client. They're paying enough to your uh, your uh, your company for your services. You mightn't be getting paid as much as you'd like, but uh, the client is paying a lot for you. So we have to respect that. OK, here's another one. Uh, question 3A for NCCP. It says here, assess the viability of the current range of courses. So what are the key words here? So again, you know, viability of the current range of courses, right? It's only six marks going here, which looks to me like it's slightly under uh, funded from a marks perspective, but that's either here or there. The question requirement, they say, this is what they say in the examiner's report on this particular, the question clearly uh, clear is clear, and yet many candidates seem to simply ignore the word viability. So remember, when you're uh, playing this uh, game of SBL with the examiners and markers next Tuesday, they serve up Roger Federer style. They serve up a word to you, a key word. In this case, it's viability, right? And so all you have to do is to keep sending that ball back to them, send that word back to them. So many times during your answer, you have to say, the viability of this course needs to be questioned or the vi this clearly is a viable course because and so on. Right. So in your answer, you need to be using that word viable like at least, you know, six times. Yeah. So plenty of times. All right. OK, you got it. And um, and then there was um, the story then about 3B, which is the CEO's proposal of the new art course. Do you remember that question? Yeah. We looked at it in the revision course and so they said it was reasonably well done, but the reason I'm putting it in here is I'm including it here as uh, this evaluation of things like unit costs, payback, break even. That stuff, in my opinion, will come back up more regularly as I think the exam will start to get uh, more kind of concentrated on sort of specific financials like those right and i think you want to be looking at it and again earlier on we also mentioned like sensitivity of say a net present value right okay um there was one other one that was not not well done right not well answered right it's, i sound like a broken record here not well answered you know and they were saying here this idea of the um the, the project sponsor and the project manager being the same person right okay and again, they said much of this was because many candidates had not read the question requirement carefully. So there is a sort of a theme here. Right. And as I said to you in the revision course last night, you know, my dad used to always say to me as I went out to do my exams, he'd say, make sure you look, you read the question. Right. And of course, as a young person, I went, puff, puff, puff. but of course he was right. And uh, the thing about it is in every examiner's report for not just ACCA, but in every discipline, it turns out this is the recurring theme in all exams. And so the reason for that is humans have a tendency to uh, freestyle or not take direction very well. And if you think about it, your exams are a test of how well you take direction, which means when your boss tells you to do something, do you do that or do you do kind of something close to that? But it's not quite what they asked for. Right. So in other words, your professional exams, in this case, your ACCA is testing you. How can you take direction? Can you do as you're asked to do? Right. So can you read the requirement? Yeah. So it's really important if you think about that. That's really your number one thing is. And that's why we do so much preparation on just getting the keywords and then creating a structure based on those. OK. All right. That's enough. Um, 
So here's one from Optima, which is last September, right? Um, and it says briefing notes here. There was a section around segmentation, right? And you need to know that, um, you know, there's uh, many candidates who clearly did not understand the concept, right? So you need to know about segmentation for this exam, for sure, right? And then it went on to say uh, there was a section on value for money. Uh, particularly, a weaker candidates did not fully understand a collaborative relationship. So apart from the value for money side of it, right, there was a particular note here which was that there was this idea of a public-private uh, partnership, right? And so there was particular challenges, and I would watch out for that in another exam. I don't know if it's this September, but in a uh, an exam coming up soon, right? Okay, there is uh, that idea. So not only do you need to be delivering value for money, but now that, you know, how does this fit in with Optima Gym, who are sort of more a differentiated, you know, high uh, value uh, uh, type of gym, yeah? So they're more like Westwood here in Ireland or uh, David Lloyd's in the UK, whereas as compared to, say, for example, the public sector looking for, so what's the challenge there, yeah? Okay, so look out for that in your exam. Now, last June, there was Yex Marine, right? Okay, sorry, it's, it's March, right? So the March-June paper, right? They give a composite, you know what I'm saying, right? And it says here, there was a section here about, say, for example, there's a proposal to establish a strategy committee, right? And it turns out there was some uh, extra information when you looked at, say, you know, where the professional skills are described. And so it's, it mentioned things like omissions, for example, right? And so candidates generally limited their marks here through failure to develop points, uh, did not consider the needs of Yex Marine, given its strategic, commercial and governance situation. So again, you need always to be applying your answer to the context of this, the situation of Yex Marine. That's the crucial thing, right? So omissions such as, say, and again, it mentioned omissions that might be in this proposal. So, for example, the non-executive director wasn't uh, on it, or even the finance director wasn't on it, right? So to mention that isn't enough. You need to say why that would be significant or concerning, right? Okay, you got it. Um, and then it says, prepare briefing notes here of how the employee's uh, dissatisfaction may impact on organizational change process. Now, I want to make a note on this here, right? So they're mentioning here a specific thing here, each stage of the organizational change process, right? This task provided a good example of how a model could be used in an SBL exam, right? The organizational change process suggested the use of a change model such as Lewin's three-stage model, right? Now, make sure you, you, you note this next bit, right? Although technical marks were not awarded for the model, it could provide, fair enough, a structured framework for organizing the answer and it would also be a source of ideas for specific activities that could happen, right? So Lewin, it's, a, it's, it's not a huge part of the course, right? It's where you, um, you, you unfreeze, uh, move and refreeze, yeah? And so fair enough, fair enough. You know, Lewin, it's interesting, right? But if you're in the exam next Tuesday and you think, oh my gosh, organizational process, what, well, what's this referring to, right? I can understand that a lot of students would be going, I don't know what this is, right? Because I thought that when I looked at it, I go, well, is it Lewin or is it, it's not Balagon and Hope Haley, the contextual features, it's not that. They would have mentioned something around the context. So it's not that. And so, you know, by elimination, I said, well, it's probably Lewin, but again, it's not clear, right? Now, the first thing to, to note is there is zero marks going for you knowing Lewin, but it could be useful for giving a structure and also for giving ideas for things that you could do at each of those stages. OK, fair enough. Right. But my advice to you as a student who's doing an exam next Tuesday is you've got to be in the exam and not panic when you see this and just do your best. There's 10 marks going. Do your best to say, look, OK, if I was organizing a change process, what would I do? 
right and just make it very very practical and just say right here is the things that i would do right okay so you don't need to have loon another good example of this was in uh, duce uh, the uh, sweets uh, manufacturers and they had one from um say the baldridge uh, performance excellence model right and i remember a student said to me afterwards uh, they couldn't uh, remember much about it and so they didn't really do much of that question i was thinking oh i must make sure that i tell all other students to you know this is a practical exam if you can't remember some model just say okay how would we uh, achieve performance excellence right keep it very practical just try and score simple marks and that's the way to do it. Yeah, you could score just as many marks, the maximum of marks without using the model. That's a really important thing for you to hear. Right. OK, that's enough. Keep going. Um, and so, again, you can see here there's another one which was uh, prepare a report on the. Uh, for, well, let's look at it here. I always say to you, what are the key words? Yeah, task three, set up a structure. Right. So, again, I, I, I tend to try and put set up a structure in blue because it's a different, it's the next stage of your exam technique, right? So it says here, advise on the financial and non-financial benefits and drawbacks of each investment, right? So this looks very like some of the earlier ones that we were looking at, that structure, right? Okay, I'm going to let you guys uh, to do it uh, yourself, right? Um, but you can see how it's going to be. It could easily be a table, for example, yeah? Yeah. Um, and recommends, oh, there's another one, sorry, I didn't get the, the last one here, and recommends with reasons. So I've got uh, financial, not financial, and then I've got so, uh, another column with drawbacks, and I've got uh, recommend, uh, sorry, the, the recommend actually is is at the end. It's a separate section, right? Okay. Um, and so you can, uh, you can go down here, there's some points here. Um, it says here that um, candidates who follow this approach uh, indicated uh, in the task discussing each upper, uh, uh, so separately to discuss them separately splitting their answers between benefits and drawbacks just like we did above right okay so there they are there's the uh, the keywords uh, benefits and drawbacks right okay and uh, into uh, financial and non-financial right were able to generate plenty of ideas of course they were right now the reason an extra point here is um let me just um I'm just going to come in here just for a second. Uh, now, here we go again. It was just uh, got away from me there for a second. Um, now, here we go. Uh, the requirements um, did not uh, specify a direct comparison. Now, that's the point I was trying to get to, right? So it said the requirements uh, did not specify a direct comparison. And the one that we would have been thinking of from specimen exam three would be NEBI, where the restaurant and the hotel, you were asked to contrast them and compare them. Yeah. So, um, so in this occasion, it did not specify that you needed to compare and contrast these different uh, investment vehicles, right? Um, and that those who try to compare them point by point, right? It says here, seem to have more difficulty generating ideas. So that's a very important point. Why? Because in this exam, your overall exam report, it doesn't need to be perfect. You just need to be scoring, 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 scoring quickly, right? Just score quickly, right? It doesn't have to hang all together. You just need to make points that are about two, two and a half lines long. And that's a paragraph, right? And you just go straight into the next one and the next one and the next one, depending on how many marks are available, right? You don't need to see just the whole thing you know come together like i would if i was presenting this to the actual client no you just think there's 80 technical marks to score i'm going to score 80 of them right okay and just like the uh, candidate in uh, in the june paper who scored 89 percent right third in the world first in ireland but you know what that's what you need to be aiming for why not yeah that's my advice to you guys right so it says in uh, the examiner's report that the financial analysis, get this, the financial was the biggest weakness in many answers. Well, look, I would say to you guys, and the, what we always advise you here at PAT is 
do too much financial analysis in your SBL paper because if you do, yeah, you know, it's an old joke, it's uh, you're in danger of passing, right? But that's what you want to be doing, right? Okay. And you can read down through the rest of these areas here. If I was you, I'd be looking out for things like payback, etc. Right. Okay. Um, and so you can you you can see here, um, this is the same advice back again that we've looked at earlier, right? Look, I hope that you have found these points useful in highlighting some of the areas noted by examiners as being purely, poorly done in recent exams, right? I suppose the punchline from my point of view is this is a good place for you to focus your revision. Now, the next thing to say is keep going, you can do this and good luck in your exam because everyone needs a bit of luck, I think it's fair to say. And if you need any help with your SBL exam, why don't you contact me? It's uh, Owen O'Reilly is my name and I work at Professional Accountancy Training. And thank you so much and good luck in your exam.